My name is Travis Bell. I'm a porter here at Pasco Emergency. Um, I've been involved with the Kanban project in our department. As a department that's quite busy and really dependent on supplies, we wanted to make sure that we always had enough and had it when we needed it, where we needed it. Originally, um, we had just all of our supplies in one color bin or the cardboard boxes that the supplies actually came in. So we've moved to bins of different color depending on the type of product. So for example, um, blood products or circulatory related are in red, respiratory products are in blue, um, urinary are yellow, black is miscellaneous, uh, green is for patient care, white is for dressings. So just at a glance that helps you determine where you're going to direct your focus. If you're looking for something for an IV, you know you're not going to go to a blue bin. Um, whereas before, the supplies required could be on several different carts and so you'd have to just know where it was and learn that over time. So one other thing we did to help people find supplies is we did an alphabetized list with uh, dividers. So people searching for supplies, they can come look for like a 10 mil uh, sterile water, but as well I've got alternate descriptions of it. So if there's a consensus from the department that there's people call it five different names throughout the whole department, I've got all five in there referring back to what it actually says on the card and regardless of what they've searched under, they still find it in the location and can then use the alphanumeric to locate the item. The Kanban types, there's ordinary, which is one card for every item. So we've implemented that for larger items and less frequently used or more expensive items. So there's a card attached to this central line insertion kit. So as the user grabs this item, they'll remove the card and then they take it over, put it into our Kanban post and then go use the item. <clears throat> that signals to materials management during their order period that one of these items was used, they place an order for another one. So we'll get one back. One of our safeties built in is that we have two rooms that are identical located equal distance for each half of the department. So if I've used this one, this central line kit, although I might not use it a lot, I still have another one on the other side. Other items that we use higher volumes of, we put them in two bin. So I've got a larger quantity of them. This one bin represents a day's supply. This other bin represents another day's supply. So this should get me through the day. I empty this bin out, I pull the card, I put the empty bin below it, and now I start into this supply. Then the next day when the order is done, I get this bin back full. The third Kanban type is Signal Kanban. That, we did use that in our first try at this. Um, it was ideal for the amount of space we had. It worked well. However, there's high probability of user error because the card sits at a set point within the supplies. So, for example, here on the ECG daisies, you would have, at a certain point, this card would be tagged at on this item, so as I came to that point, I would pull the card off, I still have some more behind it to use, and then the supplies would come. Where the user error came in would be either during the restocking, that card wouldn't be put at the correct point again, so it would throw the, the sequence out, or the, the nursing or ER staff would grab a large volume of them, taking the card with them to their point of use, and certain cards would linger for months before we'd get them back or find out that they were even missing in the first place. So uh, on our second try, we were able to free up a bit more space, put more items into two bin systems and ordinary, and we totally did away with signal. So if you had a smaller user group, signal might be ideal because people would get the concept and it's less likely that somebody's gonna, you know, distort the, the methodology. For our department, we decided to um, 
include location information on the cards themselves. So we've got clean service room one, which is, that's the room we're in right now. Then we have cart A, which we've got labels above each cart. You've got cart A, B, and C. Then this location is by cart, then by shelf. So this is cart A, shelf two, and then bin eight. So you count across to bin eight, you know that that item goes in that location. With the two bin system, um, you have to set your, your par value within each bin. Um, now your par or your bin should only hold the amount you need for one replenish cycle. Now we only get one order done per day. So that's another limiting factor is that now some items I have to have two days supplies worth as opposed to if we had more frequent orders, I could make these bins smaller, thus freeing up more space and space was quite a limiting factor. So we gathered data over the course of, I think it was three or four months for our first attempt to set the values. So we figured out what was the average usage, what was peak usage, and then applied the, the Kanban math to it to determine what point we need to that's the amount we want in that bin. Or if you were doing signal Kanban, you, you determine here's what I'm gonna likely use in a day and then behind it, that's what my safety is until I get my next replenishment. One of the difficulties we had was actually in acquiring the bins. Um, There's no single vendor that was able to provide everything we needed. We might be able to get, you know, a four inch bin from Acklin's but then if I needed a higher wall for large items to prevent it from falling out, I had to go to Uline to go get those, those bins. So it was a bit difficult tracking down the, the, bin, the right bin for the right products. So I only needed four of these bins, but I had to order them in a box or a set of 24. So now there's 20 extra bins sitting there. Hopefully somebody else can use them. Another problem we had was with the mounting of labels. Um, originally, we had just the, the shelf label holders were those small clear plastic ones that are, you know, three inches, two inches wide. And as we were pulling the bins out, we would knock those labels off or they'd get slid down. So we weren't able to see what item was actually there. So one thing we came across was just J trim like for siding on a house. Um, so we cut it to size for the shelves and then we buffed off the edges so that there was any a hazard there for the users. And we find that it works quite well. It doesn't allow for shuffling sideways and as well, it doesn't dislodge as easily. Um, problem we still have is the label adhesion. Nothing really sticks to plastic very well. Um, so that's something we need to look at going forward is, is there a better way to put labels onto these bins? Um, <clears throat> the product we went with here is called Teslin. Um, it's a plasticized uh, label that you can print directly onto. Um, and we got templates from a, a local print shop that he was able to actually stamp out the size of label that we needed. So we are able to get the items are listed on the front as well as the bin with its location which then matches the shelf location. That same Teslin is what we actually printed the cards on and we managed to um, adhere them to the ad addressographs which you can get these in multiple colors. On the other side <coughs> we actually use a white card because when materials management comes up during the day to do their ordering they might come grab both sets of cards and it's just a quick visual for them to separate. This is for clean service room one, this is for clean service room two. Um, the labels do stick to the addressographs quite well because there's a matte finish on the one side. The glossy finish doesn't stick as well. Um, this product is, uh, we did some in-house testing for, for heat, uh, chemical, high pressure, it actually holds up quite well if the original adhesion is done well. Space was probably another one of our, our biggest limiting factors. We 
we had to, the, the first attempt, we actually had a lot more items on here, probably about another 100, 120 items. We've got 900 total for the department that would be replenished normally through stores. In our second round of data collection, we determined some items weren't used at all in eight months. So lots of those items got moved into a third location, a storage room, which has not been con-bond yet. Um, but by moving those items out, we were able to free up more space so we could do more tube-in um, and actually lower the shelves on, on these carts or actually eliminate a shelf to make it more accessible to the majority of users. Certain items we still aren't able to get delivered to us in the volume that we actually would optimally use. We still have to accept larger quantities just because uh, our, dis our suppliers ship them to us in a larger volume. So again, that's where materials has helped us out on some issues. For example, there's a suction filter that we use maybe two of in a month. I have to get that in a bag of 200. Um, so some items, they're, they're willing to keep the, the extra downstairs, but others, we, we still have to take like a whole box of alcohol swabs um, if I order. I mean, that's not a big deal, but it does add up if it's happening multiple times. Like this particular swab, I'd probably only use actually a quarter of this box a day. Um, so I still have to take some volume of excess because we haven't got to that point yet where our vendors are fully on board working with us and okay, yeah, we can break that up into amounts of 10. We still get bulk on some items. So one of the key benefits that uh, quite a few staff have appreciated is that now this system enables, uh, we are the ones responsible now if we run out of things. The, the only reason why we should be empty on this is because somebody didn't pull the card at the right time. We will, we will be able to deliver um, more timely care because we won't have to go to the wards to grab certain supplies. Um, before, I, I don't think that that was a problem as far as what we have here. We still had the same amount of stuff. We've just diminished it, so it's more of a, a cost saving so far. Before Kanban, we ran out of the, the neck collar for about three, four months. So they were traded like gold between departments. Um, that sort of thing is still occurring where we still get out of stock with unknown return dates on when we're gonna get it back. Um, if this system's implemented and we do get everybody on board, uh, suppliers, vendors, all the units, all the staff, I think there's no reason why we should ever run out of anything. One of the uh, concerns raised by Sensei was our old system for the catheters. We had just a, a cloth, uh, hanging cloth unit that each catheter was held in horizontally. Um, that didn't allow us to maintain uh, first in, first out. So we ran the risk of expiry. Again, we're busy enough that our data actually showed we weren't expiring any of them. However, other departments might. And so what we came up with was uh, pegboard with hooks on so the catheters are mounted here the cards behind it as I take this catheter I take the card behind it send that away then when the new cards come in the materials management would take off the existing supplies put the newest ones at the back and then put the cards from the previous supplies on top of that so it allowed good turnover good circulation um, and that's really one of the benefits to this system is you're controlling your expiration and your out of, uh, your expired stock. Um, again, we do. I think our total on the 900 items. I think we we're around two, three hundred dollars worth of expired stuff when we looked at it. So when you look at the total value of this area, I, it. It didn't save us a lot of money, but I can definitely see how other units with more specialized equipment, less used stuff would definitely benefit from that in ensuring that their newest stuff is always coming through. It is a benefit to us in that the, the smaller items like cathalons, you might have one, one in particular there that would sit there and linger at the back and never get used. And so it prevents us from using uh, out of date items 
in that sense on some of these smaller things. Um, so improving patient safety there, again, not really changing how much we were losing as far as expired for dollar amount.